Welcome to Florence, South Carolina. Florence is located on the coastal plains of the eastern seaboard about an hour west of the Atlantic Ocean. The physical geography of the area is dominated by flat terrain, forest filled with a variety of pines and oaks, and swamps. Driving in, around, and through Florence, visitors will see a landscape dotted with remnants of an agricultural heritage combined with features of growth dictated by the luxury of location. Florence's central location, as well as access to waterways and railroad lines, played a pivotal role in the development of the area from a rural backwater to a modern suburban setting. As many pass through Florence on the way to other destinations such as Myrtle Beach, Columbia, Florida, and the northeastern United States, they miss an unheralded and largely unknown history rich in diversity and contrast. Florence's history runs the gamut from indigenous dwellers that relied on the land to survive to the perils of modern warfare. Visitors can weave a historical narrative by visiting a variety of sites that Florence has to offer. Visitors driving through Florence can see home timber cabins that stand as a reminder of the unsavory past that Florence shares with much of the southern United States. These cabins, built by African slaves in the early 19th century, are displayed on the campus of Francis Marion University. The cabins served as home for many generations of slaves and former slaves throughout the years, and visitors can read about the tools and methods as well as the people that built the cabins. Information kiosks detail the lives and culture and contributions of the people as well as other historical facts. In a park that bears his name, Henry Timrod's one-room schoolhouse still survives. Once used by Timrod to educate the children of the local plantation owners that enslaved others, the tiny building now pays tribute to a man that is known as the Poet Laureate of the Confederacy. Monuments have been erected providing visitors with a taste of Timrod's poetic talents. Continuing with the theme of the Civil War, propellers from the Confederate cruiser PD are displayed on the grounds of the Florence Museum. The crew of the PD intentionally sank the cruiser on the Great PD River to avoid capture by the United States Army during the Civil War. The propellers were recovered from the river many years later by artifact hunters and now stand as testament to the longevity of their construction. Among the stately oaks and the hanging Spanish moss stands a silent reminder of the great rift that tore at the fabric of the United States. During the latter part of the Civil War, Florence was home to a Confederate prisoner of war camp known as the Stockade. Prisoners of war were transferred to and housed at the Stockade until General Sherman's march forced Confederate leaders to relocate the prison. As many as 12,000 Union soldiers were imprisoned at the Stockade, and over 2,500 soldiers died and were laid to rest in mass graves. The grave markers indicate the location of the burial trenches and the number of dead buried in the trenches. The entire area has since been converted to a national cemetery and serves as the final resting place for veterans of the United States military. But Florence is not just a collection of Civil War artifacts, memories, and graves. It is also the home of William H. Johnson. Johnson was born in Florence and left at age 17 to study painting in New York. His talents led him to become a world-renowned artist often associated with the Harlem Renaissance. His paintings are now displayed in various museums and his work is considered among the greatest in the 20th century. Even with all of Florence's historical offerings, they may be best known for something that occurred by accident. People that happened to be driving along Highway 76 in 1958 may have been surprised by this scene. bomb breaks loose from a mounting shackle in a B-47 jet over Florence, South Carolina, plummets to earth, causing a sensational freak accident. There was near disaster for those within range of the TNT, that is the bomb's trigger. Six were injured. The home of Walter Drake was turned into a shambles. In the Drake yard, the blast tore a 35-foot deep crater, but despite the havoc, authorities emphasized the explosion was not a nuclear blast. The bomb was not assembled for firing standard procedure during transportation. 
No accident could make it explode, and there was no fission, no radioactive fission products revealed as the Air Force scoured the area in an intensive search for any information of value following the first accident of its kind in history. The atomic bomb crater, as it is now known, is an often ignored roadside attraction. This rarely visited site requires a drive through an abandoned mobile home park and is accessible through an overgrown trail on the outskirts of Florence. Walking down the trail, visitors can see the foundations of the once standing farmhouse as well as other debris from the explosion. In addition, newspaper articles are displayed that chronicle the incident. A wooden replica of the bomb stands near the water filled crater that served many years as a trash dump and burn pit for local residents. The unique and interesting history of Florence is manifested in a variety of attractions, and these attractions can provide visitors with a broad view of not only the history of Florence, but with the United States as well. Those traveling the Interstate 20 or Interstate 95 would do well to slow down and experience the history that Florence has to offer. Thank you.